Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Let's take a look at Wormwood, the third trumpet in the book of Revelation. We see uh, Gaul and Wormwood in the second Revelation 12 sign that's coming up here. This Feast of Trumpets, the year 2023. So what is Wormwood? What is this third angel? What's the result of their trumpet sound? So Revelation 8, 10 says, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. So is Wormwood, is this great star an asteroid that's going to strike the earth? or something else. I think it's something else. We know a star from Revelation 1.20, I believe it is, is an angel. So this is a great angel coming down from heaven, falling down from heaven. We know the stars fall at the seal number six, and I believe the seals and the first four trumpets all occur at the start of the tribulation. So this is Satan this is the great angel Satan being cast down to the earth. And Satan makes a third part of the waters follow him. Makes a third part of the waters become wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. So let's look at the concordance for the word wormwood. We have the number 3939 in the Old Testament. The Anna, which is wormwood, has a value of 155. And we have in the New Testament, used only two times, is absinthos, absinthe, basically, wormwood, used twice in the New Testament. So the first mention of wormwood occurs on the plains of Moab. This is a picture in the background of the plains of Moab on the northern edge of the Dead Sea as the Israelites were getting ready to cross the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And Moses is speaking to them in Deuteronomy 29, 14 through 21. And he says, Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. For ye know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt, and how we came through the nations which ye passed by. And ye have seen their abominations, and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe, whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God, to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven, and the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law. Okay, so here in the first mention of Wormwood in the Bible, we see a false peace. We see a fake peace. We see people turning away from God. That leads to Wormwood and Gaul, and the anger of the Lord comes. So this false peace is going to come, Wormwood's going to come, and then the anger of the Lord's going to come. So wormwood, gall, and bitterness all go together. So we can look at gall and bitterness also in the Bible. In Deuteronomy 29.18, we saw gall and wormwood. In Proverbs 5.4, it says, But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. And in Jeremiah 9.15, Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, The God of Israel, behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood, and give them the water of gall to drink. And finally, in Lamentations 3.15, he hath filled me with bitterness. He hath made me drunken with wormwood. So wormwood's associated with a false peace and with sudden destruction. We saw in Deuteronomy 29, 18, we have gall and wormwood from, from turning away from God, saying that they'll have peace, and then the wrath of God comes. And in Isaiah 33, 7, Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. In Isaiah 38, 17, Behold, for peace... I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. Wormwood comes on the day of the Lord. In Deuteronomy 32, 32 through 35, we see, For their vine is of the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me? 
and sealed up among my treasures. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. So we always see the sudden destruction that comes with the day of the Lord. And in Zephaniah one fourteen, we see the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth it greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Wormer comes down just after the rapture go up. In Ecclesiastes 7.26, And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Isaiah 38.17, Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. In Ephesians 4.30-31, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Wormwood is cast down when Babylon falls. Trumpet 2 is Babylon falling. Trumpet 3 is Wormwood. You also see the connection between those two in Isaiah 14. And then in Genesis 49, 22 through 23, I think there's a very oblique reference here. It says, Joseph is a fruitful bough. And out of Joseph come Ephraim and Manasseh, which I think there's a lot of evidence pointing to those being Manasseh being Great Britain and Ephraim being the United States and the United States being Babylon. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branch run over the well. The archers have sorely grieved him and shoot at him and hated him. So the sorely grieved is 4843. If we go back to our concordance, 4843 is to be bitter. And then... Uh, the archers is of the first of the seals of judgment. So that's Wormwood cast down when Babylon falls. Wormwood, finally, is Satan, like we talked about in the first slide. Uh, Isaiah fourteen twelve. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Isaiah twenty four twenty one. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And Revelation eight eight eleven. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And of course we know in Revelation twelve nine that Satan's cast down, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. So Wormwood's deceiving, uh, making the waters bitter, the waters being the people of the world. It could also be the word of God that, the, that Satan corrupts. He has cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Wormwood is on earth during Jacob's trouble. Ezekiel 21, 6. Sigh therefore, thou son of man, with the breaking of thy loins and with bitterness. Sigh before their eyes. The breaking of thy loins is always a picture of Jacob's trouble. Ezekiel 27, 31. And they shall make themselves utterly bald for thee and gird them with sackcloth. And they shall weep for thee with bitterness of a heart and bitter wailing. And the baldness and the sackcloth always goes with Jacob's trouble as well. So Wormwood is the end result of adultery in the in the Bible, both physical and spiritual. Numbers 5 deals with how to treat adultery. And in 5.18 we see, And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord, and uncover the woman's head, and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse. In Numbers 5.25, And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causeth the curse, and the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. And then Proverbs 5, 3 through 5, talking more about the spiritual. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is stronger than oil. But her end is bitter as a wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. And of course, wormwood being associated with Satan is associated with death and hell. There in Proverbs 3 through 5. So that is the third trumpet. That is wormwood. That's what's coming upon the earth at the start, I think, of the Great Tribulation, right after we are raptured out of here. I hope that everyone who hears this is going to be raptured out of here, and all it takes is your belief. In Acts 16, 30-31, the apostles were asked, What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what is this that we are to believe? Jesus Christ is the sacrifice. He sacrificed himself to pay for our sins. All of us are sinful. All of us are sinful all the time. 
and we are one, none of us will go to heaven. There's no getting to heaven because we're good enough. We get to heaven because Christ sacrificed for us, and that belief is what saves a person. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And what waits for us? Well, everlasting life. And in Isaiah 64, 4, For since the beginning of the world men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Make your decision for Christ today. I encourage you. Once you've made that decision and you become a believer, you are sealed permanently and forever, and your body will be redeemed at the day of redemption, right at the start of the day of the Lord. You'll get your new body, and you'll go to heaven. And you won't be here for the wrath of God and the result of the spiritual adultery of this world, which will be a wormwood cast down onto this world, and the horrible seven years of Jacob's trouble. Thank you for watching this video. May God bless you and keep you, and I look forward to seeing you again for the next video.